Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey, everybody, welcome live from Chicago. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist, all things sports, medicine, fitness, and wellness, brought to you by Global School Wear, uh, school uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, two great magazines, Lower Extremity Review Magazine and MVP Parent Magazine, and the famous UK Health Radio Network. Got a great doubleheader, a couple of great repeat guests. Greg Justice, he's a fitness entrepreneur, he's a speaker, he owns a publishing company, he's the co-author with Elaine LaLanne of the exciting, best-selling Pride and Discipline. He's also a teammate of mine, National Fitness Hall of Fame. He returns along with Dr. Eric Williams, the general and sports chiropractic physician, very involved in his community in so many different uh, age groups and teams. He is the former Naperville, Illinois Citizen of the Year. Then some uh, sports doctors in with Bob Guider Wisdom, some emails. Greg Justice, welcome back to the Sports Doctor. Dr. Bob, it is always a pleasure to talk with you. Give us some background, Greg, on yourself and uh, your career, the publishing company. Uh, Well, let's see. We'll start back in uh, the early 1980s when this uh, crazy industry that we call the fitness industry really started to boom. And uh, I opened Kansas City's original personal fitness training center called At Your Convenience uh, in May of 1986. Uh, My original mentor in the industry was none other than Jack LaLanne. And I was very fortunate to have Jack as a mentor and certainly Elaine, his wife. Uh, And, you know, just last March, we uh, launched Pride and Discipline, the legacy of Jack LaLanne through Scriptor Publishing Group, which is a publishing company that I co-founded seven years ago. And uh, we have now published uh, over 200 authors through Scriptor Publishing Group. And uh, we're just looking forward to the next seven years for at least 200 more authors. Right. You give or take a few. You know, I I beat you by a few years. I met Bob Guida in the late 70s. Yes. (laughs) You know, (laughs) and and again, you know, you're so you're so right. You know, another great to the late Bob Guida, great, great uh, sports therapist of champions. And and, uh, of course, Jack LaLanne who I remember in black and white TV, like so many of us do growing up. And I, at the same time, I remember him towing a a, a Queen Elizabeth or something when he was 60 years old (laughs) in the water, just an extraordinary uh, uh, individual. And, and of course at the national fitness hall of fame, where you uh, uh, really excitedly was was to help present my induction. I think Elaine Lane was there. I think she did three or four push-ups. Before she gave her talk, Greg. <laughs> yeah, she is known to uh, perform whenever she speaks, and push-ups are one of her specialties. She just and celebrated I, like her her ninety sixth birthday, ninety seventh, and she turned ninety seven. Yes, apologize to her. Yes, you got to apologize to her. Absolutely, and I'll, um, and I'll be with her next in about two weeks in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Uh, for a big book signing event of Pride and Discipline. So I'm looking forward to seeing her in about two weeks. You know, in your career, Greg, you know, again, being a pioneer in the fitness world industry, I think you also, uh, uh, you got injured training for the ninjas. Well, you were going to be getting involved in that group. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, and, exactly. And One year ago that... tomorrow. Yeah, one year ago tomorrow, I broke my ankle. I didn't want to remind you. <laughs> no, I, hey, it's I all did. good. Because, and you're, you know, you're amazing how you've come back. Well, uh, you're you know, a great example. I'll, I'll give you. I'll tell you what. Back. 
Yeah, let, let me explain a little bit about that. One of my favorite quotes of none other than Jack LaLanne is that your bank account and your health account are the same thing. The more you put in, the more you can take out. And an example of that is when I broke my ankle, again, exactly one year ago tomorrow, and here I am, you know, a year later with a couple of screws in my ankle, but I will tell you that I'm 100% and have been back to doing my Ninja Warrior training with no limitations, no restrictions, and the very first movement I did when I started training back with the Ninjas is the exact movement that I broke my ankle on because I wasn't going to allow that to be... I, you know, take space in my head. So I wanted to get that out of the way and I did it very well. If I have to say so myself, and now that is out of my head and I don't have to worry about it. You know, the sports doctor advice many times for individuals like yourself, Greg, is we got to keep within perspective, you know, uh, after those kinds of injuries and (laughs) and what we're doing. And uh, to sometimes we, we need to to hold you guys back. A touch, because uh, now you're back That's to flipping thousand pound tires, and whatever else. You're doing. I, I just did that yesterday. Yes, indeed, it's I, a four hundred and fifty <laughs> pound tire. And, and you know what's interesting, Doctor Bob is is every year it gets a little more difficult because with each workout, I flip my age each workout. So this year I'm flipping flipping sixty two flips for every workout. So it's a four hundred and fifty pound tire. This year, it's 450, or I'm sorry, 62 flips per workout. So every year, it kind of ups my uh, game a little bit and keeps me in the game. Greg, what's the website people could find out about you and uh, the book? What's the best way? Uh, I know you've got a couple of different things. They would just um, uh, uh, Google what? Uh, yeah, just Google Pride and Discipline. The Legacy of Jack LaLanne. And you can also find all the information on my website, which is gregjustice.com. You know, having the opportunity not only to be mentored by, but then get the opportunity to recreate the legacy of this famous Jack LaLanne uh, in so many areas, bring him back to life uh, with the, uh, again, uh, addition of... um, Elaine, working with you with all of these different personal stories, um, that's really exploded on the scene, hasn't it? Yeah, and that's been real special because we were able to actually publish some of Jack's never-seen-before works. And when you read them, you know, he wrote them 30, 40, 50 years ago, and they're so topical and timely and still so relevant. He was just so far ahead of his time that it was a joy to write that book. And and to be honest with you, Dr. Bob, Elaine, when we started this book project, she grabbed my arm, looked me in the eye and said, Greg, all I want from this is to make sure that Jack gets credit for what he did for this industry. So that's the mission with this book. And I think we're accomplishing it. Yes. Didn't one of our colleagues... (laughs) Now, the Lifetime uh, uh, Achievement Award winner, Gilad Jankowicz, has been on my show numerous times. Mm-hmm. You know him so well. Uh, yes. did, did he just break with the, one of the records for the longest-running TV show uh, yeah, he in did, the actually, world of fitness? Yeah, he did that about three or four years ago. This year, right. um, Gilad will start his 40th season on television. Wow. Where he broke when Jack's did, record when did of 36. Jack, when did Jack Lane? Start his TV world. 1951. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty remarkable. And, you know, the world of virtual fitness exploded during COVID. And people talk about, you know, it's the next revolution. But when you think about it, Jack LaLanne was the original virtual trainer. because He, he started on television training millions of people in 1951. Yes, at the beginning of the whole, that, that incredible world of education. Yes. And that whole idea of uh, introducing um, fitness. And uh, it's, it's amazing. I've always been, Guy that was always such a tremendous rubber band fan. And yes. again, Jack Lane goes way back, elastic bands. Nobody knew what they were, how, uh, how to spell the word. 
and it's, mm-hmm. it's one of the most dynamic areas of, of fitness because of its versatility, uh, uh, elastic bands. And Jack invented it in, in, at, yes. a dinner, at a dinner in 1954 with Paul Bragg. And Paul brought in about a three-foot piece of rubber and asked Jack what he could do with that. And he started pulling and stretching and curling. Right. And the next day, they went down to the Oakland Tire Store and had them start building out casts for six-foot, five- or six-foot-long rubber bands with loops on the end so that they could start the world of resistance training. And that's actually our first reintroduced product into the Lelane Fitness brand that we're relaunching is the Elastic Band. So we're excited to relaunch that iconic brand of Lelane with the Resistance Band. And it goes yes, full circle and, you know, back to 1954. We've got we to make a big deal out of the importance of strengthening the feet and ankles, my friend. Yep, absolutely. And that's always, uh, again, we loved rubber bands for that. Whether you yep. were the best athlete in the world or a grandmother, you could safely use rubber band resistance uh, in, in so many uh, different areas. And it's just great to see its popularity uh, coming back, you know, uh, uh, with uh, such a bang. And you're also involved with rope technology, aren't you, Greg? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I am part owner in a company called Endless Rope, and it is the world's first scalable rope climbing machine. And uh, you can just go to EndlessRope.com to see a video and, and learn all about it. Everybody it is a truly remarkable the challenge. Tool. Everybody remembers, Greg, the challenge growing up in school yes, of climbing in, up a in, rope. <laughs> and <laughs> and what, it, what it took, it's another secret in the area of really high performance yes. is all sorts of training uh, yes. using, you know, the rope technology. So uh, uh, that's another pioneering event. Huh. Yeah, well, and Jack LaLanne was a huge advocate of rope climbing, and the beauty of this product, again, is that it is scalable. So if you can't support your body weight, it will go all the way down with a hydraulic motor to three pounds of resistance. And the beauty of it is you can get cardiovascular fitness, you can get resistance training, and you're actually decompressing rather than compressing the spine as you go through a workout. So it's safe. It uh, is scalable, and it's just uh, it's just an amazing workout. And do you find that it's something that uh, age group wise, again from adolescents to uh, super seniors, should be uh, doable? We have trained the highest level of athletes. I mean, world class athletes, all the way to one hundred plus year old nursing home people that can sit in a chair or on a ball and pull. Again, because it's scalable, it can be as light as three pounds of resistance or support your entire body weight. So it is truly for everybody. You know, it's uh, uh, interesting, again, you know, and if proper technique and form, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so important in all, whether it's, again, rubber bands or uh, again, whether it's using the rope technology, so I'm sure there's all sorts of instruction how to do these exercises uh, properly. And yes. I like that fact. What you said, it's not compression. It's what's the other word? Decompression. I mean, you are literally ah. separating the spine as opposed to, you know, usually when you have to, when you get intensity, like through HIIT training, uh, you usually have to do it on a track or a treadmill or something where you're compressing the spine. You can get the same cardiopulmonary response from the rope that you can on a treadmill, decompressing the spine as opposed to compressing it. You know, Greg, in the last couple of minutes, give me a few uh, records, uh, 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 events that Lelaine did besides dragging the Queen Mary or whatever it was that he did. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go do that one last. But uh, when he was 45 years old, he set a Guinness Book of World Records doing 1,000 push-ups and 1,000 pull-ups in an hour and 22 minutes. And when, you know, and it's like, I scratch my head when I think about that. And I asked Elaine, really? I said, Elaine, did he do these in blocks of like 50 at a time? He said, no, he did them consecutively because he always preached endurance. 
And, wow, and, what else? And, and, and I still am amazed. Okay, the other one, the Queen Mary that you're talking about. So when he turned 70 years of age, he swam a mile and a half in the Long Beach Harbor fighting current in cold water, handcuffed, feet shackled, pulling 70 boats with 70 people a mile and a half. Let that sink in. I really, at 70 years old. And uh, yes. he also had a nine-inch waistline, didn't he? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> he had a, he That's had what a, I remember yeah. about this guy. Yep. I yeah, he always said, you, your ass. waistline is your lifeline, he said. Your waistline is your lifeline. And again, you know, his, his comments in so many different areas, uh, you know, and his, the, the wisdom of the idea of how important fitness was to overall wellness, that whole relationship. You know, our, our, our other colleague, the famous Forbes Riley, who sold yep. $3 billion of informational stuff <laughs> yep. with, with the Vegematic yep. uh, with him. So, Well, uh, well just, not, not the know, Vegematic, but the juicer, the Jack LaLanne ah, juicer. Right, the juicer. <laughs> I had to get the right the, uh, yes. commercial. Greg, I knew the time <laughs> would fly. I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us. Quickly, give me the date again for the book and your work. Okay, so Pride and Discipline, The Legacy of Jack LaLanne, available on Amazon and uh, gregjustice.com. You can get all the information. Thank you so much, Dr. Bob. It's always a pleasure. Yes, it's always exciting, Greg. Hold on, everybody. We'll be right back at Sports Doctor. Everybody, we're back live from Chicago. It is the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. We want to welcome back Dr. Eric Williams. He's a general as well as a sports chiropractic physician in Lyle, Illinois. He works with so many different organizations, sports teams. He's on the sidelines, I think, for 15 years. Football. He's a former Naperville, Illinois Citizen of the Year. Uh, Eric, welcome back to the Sports Doctor. Well, Dr. Wild, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. You know, uh, we, we've always featured chiropractic medicine, chiropractic sports medicine for decades. And, and talk a little bit, Eric, about your background uh, and um, uh, everything that you're doing in the world of chiropractic. Well, I've been practicing here in Lyle, Illinois, for about 34 years. All right, man. The excitement of live radio, Eric. You were talking yes, sir. about the, yes, sir, you know, the, the, every sports team at all levels, uh, general wellness, general health has seen a, a tremendous inclusion of chiropractic care. Uh, wouldn't you say so? Oh, absolutely. If you look at every professional sports team, they have a chiropractor on staff. You know, if you look at the NFL, the NBA, uh, NBL, Every team has a, a chiropractor on staff. The Olympics, they got a chiropractor on staff, many chiropractors on staff full time. So everyone in the professional sports world and semi-professional world and collegiate world and high school world are utilizing chiropractic care uh, for their athletes. You know, you've been in practice long enough to, to remember the challenge of the acceptance podiatry was no exception with general medicine of chiropractic medicine. Uh, and the, uh, uh, I remember late in the, in, in the seventies, uh, with, uh, uh, Bob, the famous therapist, Bob Guida and, uh, uh, his whole group included chiropractic, uh, uh, physicians who were working with Olympic athletes who were looking to be included in the Olympic, uh, teams. And they uh, they made that happen. I thought that was um, uh, really interesting because your profession seems to be the one that's introduced wellness between exercise and nutrition. I think that um, the MDs learned from you guys. Yeah, you might say that because uh, we look at the body not just as one part, but there's many pieces, and you have to take care and t treat those many pieces of the body. Uh, and you are what you eat. So it, it starts there. If you eat garbage, you get garbage. So we, we definitely always talk to our athletes and patients about eating healthy. 
Yes, and the idea of um, non, non-drug-related treatments, um, for the most part, exclusively, has always been something, again, that I think has really, really benefited so many individuals in so many ways. Not that drugs don't have their place, like surgery has Absolutely. its place, uh, you know, but the 95% of sports medicine ain't surgical. <laughs> it's, it's, exactly. you know, it's so many different so you, overuse you, injuries, all these things. You have to start off conservatively, and that's what chiropractic has to, uh, to its benefit. We're going to start off conservatively without drugs, without medication, without surgery, to see if there's another way that we can get the body to heal properly and get the athlete back on the field as quickly as possible. You know, again, in today, the importance of activity, keeping moving. I always say on the sports doctor, Dr. Eric, that the new medicine is eating smarter, number one, keep moving, number two, and reduce stress as best you can. Uh, Yeah, those are key factors in in health. Yeah, absolutely. And the idea of proactive and preventing of problems, I think, has also been something that um, the chiropractic uh, physicians have really, really included. The idea, you know, if we want to use the word maintenance, uh, you know, and, and, or if we wanted to use the word just staying out of trouble, we don't need to have problems to benefit from chiropractic care, right? Exactly. If you wait for pain to be your indicator that there's a problem, then you're behind the eight ball. So we stay ahead of it by maintaining, ma- maintaining the spine and make sure a patient's maintaining their health in the proper way. You know, again, the uh, explosion of activity in the senior and super senior population, um, so many physical therapists we have on the sports doctors, so many other physicians and so many other specialties uh, are talking about uh, the importance of uh, fall prevention. And in the senior population, and again, in uh, uh, functional uh, medicine, and again, you the, the chiropractic uh, 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 physicians are in the middle of all of that, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. You know, we try to stay proactive. You know, with our with the, you know, speaking of seniors and balance. Well, just the way you exercise your muscles, your ligaments, your joints, you can exercise the balance portion of your body. You know, there's balance things that you can do, and uh, like yoga. Yoga always incorporates balance into their routine. Uh, because it's so important as as we age and as the body gets older. You know, and in going in the opposite direction, you know, one of the reasons I co-authored the book, Hashtag Hey Sports Parents, with Hall of Fame volleyballer uh, and uh, uh, numerous author, Sharky Zartman, was the epidemic, in capital letters, of overuse injuries in youth sports, and the, both mentally and physically. And the yeah. concerns, again, of, of preventing problems and in, in uh, trying to deal with uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, concerns proactively, have you found the school systems and the, uh, uh, the families, you know, because i got to ask you how your sports psychology skills are when you're dealing with uh, athletes and their coaches, Eric. <laughs> yeah, the, the higher the athlete, the higher uh, the, you know, the, the psychological component that you got to get involved with. Uh, sometimes athletes, especially at a young age, and parents that just don't know, they overtrain, they overtrain, they overtrain. You get a soccer player, and they think that all they can do is play soccer and run and kick, run and kick, run and kick. Well, like you're saying, overuse problems are going to show up very quickly, whether it's age 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, those problems are going to show their ugly head. I like for my kids, my athletes, to cross-train. You know, if you play soccer, how about if you have a short season of track, a short season of swimming, a short season of lifting, a something other than the one specific sport that you love and you're dedicated to. Everybody you're listening to the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, Sports Podiatrist. If you go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com, if you go over to radio shows, you go back years, international guests, national guests, local guests, an endless array of topics. 
if you go over to newspaper articles and magazines, you'll see a lot of new exciting stuff with our um, MVP Parent Magazine articles we've been involved with, the Lower Extremity Review, all sorts of topics. My hottest article still remains women in high heels. Accepting the challenge, we have thousands of followers on Twitter, on LinkedIn. If you go to at sports doc, D-O-C radio, you can chime in. We have a lot of valuable sports medicine information. We're talking chiropractic medicine uh, with uh, local chiropractic physician, Dr. Eric Williams. Um, and the uh, involvement in the community, uh, Eric, is something you've been involved with for a long time. So you speak to various groups um, and uh, uh, organizations, don't you? I, I do. I, on a regular basis, I'm, I'm at the high school giving talks to the athletes and to uh, the students there. I'm at the Lau Senior Center talking on a regular basis there to the seniors. Uh, so many health problems there that we can help uh, that just gets over-medicated and over-surgery. Uh, so we can talk to them about some natural approaches. Uh, I'm on the board for the Lau Education Foundation where we raise Lots of funds and, and, and revenue for the kids um, and their education, enhancing their education. You know, when we're dealing with, um, of course, one of the chapters in my book is called Youth Sports and Drugs, where there's an epidemic. I'm not talking about steroids. I'm talking about over-the-counter Advils and ibuprofens and some of these other drugs. Dr. Wild, don't you understand if my daughter doesn't take Advil twice a day, her ankles are killing or her knees hurt or her shin splints. Uh, so, again, the idea of um, uh, non-drug-related positive directions and what could be done. Now, again, i got to pass it by, Dr. Eric. I have a chapter in the book it's called The Prodigy Sports. You know my world and the world of figure skating. I have 10-year-olds who skate six, seven days a week. That's all they want to do. Think gymnastics. You mentioned soccer. That's also where we have these year-round uh, players. We want them to do different sports, use different parts of the body. But this is a special group. This is what I've counted on your profession a lot also. I want to ask you about that when we come back, everybody. It is the Sports Doctor. We'll be right back. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Everybody, we're back live from Chicago. It is the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. We are continuing our conversation, chiropractic physician. Here locally, Dr. Eric Williams, celebrating his 34th year in practice with all these different areas and groups he works with. Um, we touched quickly um, before the break, uh, Dr. Eric, on, again, some of the different challenges in whether uh, with some of these serious kids who might be specializing very early because it's their choice. And uh, we, we have a term called repetitive motion injuries, uh, and we know it's a, a big concern. Uh, but this is a population that we, we, we definitely see some of these kids. How do you look at that? Yeah, you have to try to gear the parent and the child towards cross-training, doing other exercises other than their specific sport to give that spine, ligament, joint time to rest and work that, that part of the body in a different angle. And the idea of a good home program or a strengthening program, again, if I have a, a young 10-year-old who's doing 50, 75 double jumps a week and we want to keep her body as best as possible. And we've already said all day that we want her to play other, other sports. <clears throat> I've had good success, again, with um, uh, them maybe getting chiropractic care even monthly uh, and or with these traveling teams and these kids that are overscheduled, like you said. What's a good maintenance kind of schedule 
for a young adolescent who's playing a high school sport or a junior high school sport, and they, their parents want to know, we want to stay out of trouble. How, how often should we see chiropractic physician uh, in general, Eric? What are your thoughts on that? Well, just it all depends on, on the, the problems that the patient child might be having. Uh, one, time a, one time a month, twice a month might be a good maintenance program. But we want to check in and make sure that they're taking the proper amount of calcium each day to keep those bones strong, you know, the, the 1,200 milligrams per day, uh, that they're getting proper amount of sleep, 8 to 10 hours every night, that their nutrition is proper morning, afternoon, and night, and that they're hydrating. We want to be checking in on those things on a regular basis because that's the part of the maintenance program is maintaining that body, keeping it working the best that it can work. How is the um, relationship with some of these coaches? I think we've come a long way, baby. I'm very excited. I've told you about the upcoming documentary, Where Our Children Play, The Challenge of Youth Sports, uh, with Chesapeake Films' Joe Franco, and we're very involved in that whole uh, uh, documentary. Again, talking about the education needed for parents and coaches, as well as these kids, when they want to get more and more serious into sports. And uh, how do you find that relationship as a sports medicine doc with some of the coaches or parents, Eric, that you're dealing with? Well, you know, sometimes I'm definitely uh, rub elbows with coaches because coaches have one-track minds. They want to win, ah. win, and win. And as a, as, a, as a physician, I want my patient to be healthy and then win without jeopardizing their body for future. Do you, find that life the, after... do, you find the, do you find that the coaching population, because I've been screaming about it for 40 years on the radio, do you find, Dr. Eric, that the coaching and parent population does get it, that we know we're dealing with just overkill in so many areas? You know, the team doctor, the Yankees, team orthopedist, frequent guest of mine, Dr. Um, uh, Chris Ahmad talked about doing, you know, elbow surgeries and Tommy John surgeries on 15 year olds, you know, with these uh, teams that play year round and some of these other kinds of challenges. But do you find Eric that um, we're really making some progress in parents and coaches understanding like what you're talking about? Yeah, we're, we're moving in the right direction slowly. You know, we're not there yet because, you know, some of the coaches and parents understand it and some don't. Some will see a physician, not get the answers they're looking for, and find another physician. And they just physician hunting to get the answers. You've got a website. For what's, my the child contact in, what's your contact information, Eric? Do you have a website to go to or on information on you and some of the different talks you do? Oh, absolutely. We, we you know, we're on social media. We're you can look at our website, www.cairo-williams.com, uh, for information. And, and look, up, look us up on you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. Yeah, you guys, all are, yeah, we, you guys do a lot content. of good stuff on, uh, on LinkedIn and some other areas, again, as an educator. This is why we definitely yeah. wanted to have you back and, and talk about, again, the idea of continuing to uh, – I saw, I think, your latest video, you were talking about trying to stay out of trouble swinging a golf club. <laughs> Absolutely. Every sport I'm going to look at and try to give some, some hints and some advice on how to be healthier with the sport, whether you're a weekend warrior or you're a professional, to be a little healthier. Because sometimes there's life after sports. Ah, uh, Really, you want to be able to throw those kids and, and grandkids around. The weekend warriors, Absolutely. again, the people... Uh, being more active, more active, even older. That's why I wrote my article on, on pickleball. And you are, all right? Aren't you a coach with uh, pickleball, Dr. Eric? I'm, I'm a certified pickleball instructor. Yes, I am. It's, it's one of my passions right now. I did 30 years of basketball, and now I've switched over to pickleball. And I've been having a great time meeting a lot of good people, having a lot of fun. Yes, you know, when I, we first saw that, like, like my, I wrote my article in 2021. People didn't know how to spell the word pickleball. When we started seeing seniors after seniors after seniors, you know, jumping on the court, you know, there's a lot of motion, movement, change of direction. 
And we saw everybody, uh, now it's a, a gigantic increase in injuries. I, I hate to say I was a soothsayer, but uh, a, a, as a coach, you must be paying attention to the physical side of this game, right, Doc? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. You know, the biggest advice I can give to, you know, those weekend warriors and people that are picking up sports for the weekend, pickleball, racquetball, whatever it might be, make sure you stretch before and after your event to warm up and to warm down those muscles, ligaments, and tendons. That's crucial. And we got to get these people to strengthen their feet and ankles, make sure they're in the right shoe. And again, work balance and structure, because again, when you're jumping around a court, your body's not used to that, uh, then you better learn how to train for it. So again, Exactly. You know, you look at the, the average pickleball player, they might be 55 years old. Well, they might have problems with their feet or their ankles or their knees. If they get in some good orthotics, that's going to make a huge difference because that's the foundation. That's the base. Yeah, we want to definitely understand that it doesn't, we don't have to be a high performance athlete, but we want to be somebody, again, tennis has always been a tremendously physical game. Racquetball was tremendously physical. And pickleball mm-hmm. is all the same different actions. So we want people to pay exactly. attention, uh, not only to the techniques and the, all these different parts of the, of the game. Uh, uh, it's amazing how this sport has exploded. It's the fastest growing sport in the country, isn't it? It sure is. And now, you know, all the cities are getting uh, major league pickleball teams. Chicago has the slice. I think that's taken after a little pizza. <laughs> I, you know, at our health club, Edwards, the famous Edwards Health and Fitness in Seven Bridges, they would cut the basketball court in half. And that was the, that was the pickleball court. And it just, again, it was, uh, I had these old patients of mine from the North Shore six, seven years ago. You read it. If you go to my website, you catch the article. Um, I don't know if we've run out of time or not. Give me the site again. People could find out about some of your info. Uh, On my website, it's www.williams-cairo.com. And on, they could also find out about your pickleball world at that site. Uh, no, that would be that would be a different site. Okay, well, I'll check you out, Doctor Eric Williams, okay. chiropractic physician, Lyle, Illinois. Thanks so much for joining me, Eric. Hold on. Thank you we'll for having me, Doctor Wild, sports doctor. Hold on, Eric. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Everybody, we are back with the Sports Doctor is in segment where we up some upcoming shows and uh, we also answer a few emails. I mix in a little bit of Bob Guida wisdom. Uh, We're going to have a repeat show by popular demand next week, the day after July 4th. It's with Rick Baba, the uh, baby boomer. Uh, expert and magazine participant uh, in that whole world, and Suzanne Gray and her organization, Right Fit, her new uh, organization to get these kids away from uh, uh, never being active in the whole cell phone world the following week. One of CNN's uh, podcast uh, directors, uh, and organizers, Erin Matheson. Uh, she's also a former um, marathoner. And then Joel Franco will return to bring us up to date with the upcoming documentary, Where Our Children Play, The Challenge of Youth Sports, 
that we've been talking about for the past few years. Um, Bob Guida, it's interesting, with our first guest today, Greg Justice, we're talking about the great Jack Lane and some of his uh, heritage and uh, history and his virtually inventing of rubber bands and rubber band resistance and my uh, long, long history with Bob Guida with that same area. I also wanted to mention with Guida what a big deal he made out of the role of the foot in sports. And regardless of the athlete's sport, their age, how great they were, he paid big attention to preventing problems in the whole lower extremity by checking the balance and stability of the foot with his famous one foot balance test, even partial squatting down, how stable is that whole foot ankle area and the importance of strengthening of that foot ankle and, uh, and lower leg. That was a big deal routinely proactively, regardless of the sport, regardless of the level of the athlete or their age. So some really uh, important criteria when it comes to some of these great, great champions of the world of uh, fitness like Jack Lane and Bob Guida. A couple of emails. Jack says, my 12-year-old son plays mostly year-round soccer. He was diagnosed with uh, calcaneal apophysitis. That's an inflammation of the large growth center, Jack, on the back and bottom of the heel. This area will be coming together uh, with a young boy until he's maybe 15 years old and is susceptible to stress. Soccer is famous because even as young, young children, they've got cleats and they've got a bunch of cleats right under the heel. So what you want to be able to do is get this kid out of these cleats, get a multi-nub shoe, and if this problem has been persistent, then uh, take a serious look at the role of orthotics. This is what I use always if I've got a persistent problem with that growth center, usually because foot mechanics is involved. Imagine flat feet. Imagine high arches. Both are different stresses to the heel. The most common is the excessively pronated or flat type foot. Uh, soccer shoes have never been the best of sports shoes support wise. So check out podiatry, pay big attention, especially if this problem is persistent. And again, you've got to have some intelligent rest. Uh, we can't push through these irritations in these kids when they're growing, both boys and girls, any jumping running activity can aggravate this. Um, getting uh, from one extreme to another, uh, Barb says, uh, seniors, uh, you talk a lot about uh, needing balance, preventing falls, paying attention to this. And uh, Barb, yes, we do. Uh, things like standing on one foot, even if you have to hold on to a surface. Things like standing on balance beams, even if you have to hold on. Um, the gym that might have a BOSU or a sand dune stepper, which are devices that create imbalance. The mini trampoline is another one. But uh, as seniors, getting a good program from physical therapy or from personal training is a great idea uh, for all seniors who can learn how to strengthen all of these areas of balance. Every time you create an unbalanced surface, you demand the balance and stabilizer systems of the body to work. This is again what made my famous colleague, the late Bob Guida, famous where he would have uh, athletes balancing on mini trampolines. If they were a baseball player, they might be catching a ball. If they were a hockey player, they might be swinging uh, the hockey stick. They were a tennis player. They might be swinging the racket. And they were working all the areas of stability and balance. So these are some examples. And get some supervision. 
again, whether it's physical therapy or personal trainer, uh, that the technique is, is proper. Um, uh, Tom says I'm a 45-year-old rudder. I was diagnosed with plantar fasciitis. I have heel spurs. Are they a surgical problem? Almost never, Tom. Almost never. Almost always, even heel spurs that are present, which is a proliferation of bone on the bottom of the heel, usually because of stretching and traction of the attachment of the large band to the heel. Uh, so if you were uh, uh, got an opinion from the doctor that you needed surgery, get another opinion. Uh, that will do it. Uh, thank you again uh, to my guests, Greg Justice, Dr. Eric Williams. Catch everybody next week. Again, we will have a replay. Have a happy July 4th holiday, everybody. Thank you. Sports Doctors.